So, so, what is an altar? The altar is nothing more than a home for spirit to sit. Um, it's the place between places where our world meets spirit world. So, our world is the physical world. We are physically here. We are physically human. We can touch. We can smell. We can see. And we can talk. Spirit also can touch and see. They just can't smell. But they can touch and they can see as well. Um, when they do appear. Okay. But the altar is the realm where we meet each other. Okay. Um, the place you serve spirit. Okay, so this is the place that you go to to serve your spirit, to talk to your spirit, to talk to your ancestors at. Okay, the only issue that you could possibly have with an altar is that you're trying to combine with multiple spirits or saints. Meaning, let's say your grandmother hated your grandfather. They're both deceased, but you put them on the same altar, they will clash. If they don't get along, that will cause problems in your work. Okay, go sit down, Stink. That will cause problems in your work, okay? You must make sure they will work well together, be at peace with one another, and if they don't do that, they're going to clash. This goes for saints as well. So if you're working with Oshun and, let's say, Santa Murte, and they're on the same altar, and they don't get along and they just keep clashing, that's going to cause your work to be disrupted. Your altar must be able to work peacefully. Okay, the altar must be able to work peacefully. If it cannot work peacefully, they will not get along. So, is there any questions this far? Okay, so now with your altars, they can face east, west, south, and north, which is fine. But remember, if they're facing certain directions, certain things are transpiring in those directions. Okay, so your ancestors should always face the east. Why? Because in the Bible, it states that the dead will rise in the east. So how do you figure out which way is east? I suggest you get a compass. Um, to figure out which way is east, to figure out which way your east is facing. Um, but your ancestor altars should always face in the east. Okay. The east is also a good place to draw in. So you're drawing in love and money. And when you want to draw in things, you should be working on the east. Okay. Now, the sun sets in the west. So the west is good to intend banishing and removing so let's say you're tired of dealing with this man you're tired of this man being involved in your life is he's narcissistic he's domestic he's everything and you know you're just trying to cut ties and you just you can't get rid of him you can You don't have to be no type of age to be considered an ancestor. If the person is deceased, they are considered your ancestors because they're no longer here. They're no longer walking the earth. Um, so you can banish, you can do work on the, on the west side and it's going to remove him. It's going to banish him. So you can go put him on your altar, do a removal, do a banishing. And it's going to remove him because you did the altar on the west. Okay. Um, you don't want your ancestors to be that you're honoring to be on the west because if they're there you're removing them you're taking them out of your life you want them to come sit so that's why they need to be on the east so if they're on if there if you're altars on the west and you're trying to figure out why you're doing all this work and your ancestors ain't coming through for you it's because you're banishing them you're removing them you're taking them they're not sitting there because your altar is on the west side Okay, so you want to remove the you want to make sure you remove your altar to the east. Um, the north is where the frost sets and the south is where the fire rests. So to cool a hot head down, you're going to go drop the ass over there in the north side. Okay, to, to let's say they have a cold heart. You want to take their asses on over to the south so that you can warm their hearts up. Okay, so again, east we're bringing in, west we're banishing, north we're cooling down south we're warming them up okay 
on your altar. No one should be on your altar if they are not deceased. So if your mama is still alive, your mama shouldn't be sitting on that altar. If your daddy is still alive, your daddy should not still be sitting on that altar. If your great grandmother is still alive, your great grandmother should not be sitting on that altar. The altar is only for the deceased. I know a lot of you guys have seen Coco if you got kids. My son watched Coco like clockwork. And if you look up that boy's altar when his parents are celebrating them, they have only the deceased sitting on that altar. There is no live people on that altar. You see the little boy had the picture and in the picture it was bent backwards. And it can't sit on that altar because it had the little girl in it. So you cannot have a person of living sitting on your altar. You can't. Okay. That will cause them to get sick. It could cause harm to them. So you definitely don't want that. Okay. So you want to make sure only the dead is sitting on your altar. Yes, Dink. Okay. You're going to have to hold on. Go sit down. Okay, so with that being said, now, once you decide where your altar will be, it's time to cleanse this altar. Okay, so you can put it on the, you have to decide where it's going to be in your household. So if it's going to be in your living room, if it's going to be in your kitchen, if it's going to be in your room, if it's going to be in your bathroom, wherever you prefer for it to be, that's up to you. No, it does not have to sit on the table. No, it does not have to sit on the dresser. It can sit on the floor if you like it to. But once you decide where this altar will be, you're going to have to cleanse it. Okay, you're gonna have to cleanse the area, the walls, the floor, the table, whatever you're using, you need to cleanse. Okay, so you'll make an altar wash. An altar wash is bay leaves, oil leaves, and three, t t three tablespoons of salt. So with these three tablespoons of salt and all these ingredients, you're going to seep it. You're going to pray, o pray Ezekiel 34 verse 27 over it three times. Okay. One, two, three. While you're sitting there, you're going to pray it over three times. Once it cools down, you're going to mix that mixture with cold water. Okay. Then you're going to wash the floors. You're going to wash the walls. And you're going to wash the space that it's going to be at. So once you do that, your altar place space is cleansed. Now you have to wait for it to dry. Okay. Now you got to wait for it to dry. Okay. Now, once your space is dry, hi, Tessie. Um, so once your space is dry, you need some type of cloth. Okay, so now for us to talk about these cloths, no, these cloths do not represent the same way that your colored candles would represent. Okay, these cloths represent a certain type of way. Okay, so we have a red cloth. That's for blood. Heart, heat, fire, love, and all the emotions that we feel and feel for the folks that we genuinely care about. Okay, then we have yellow. Okay, yellow is for the sun, is for success, is for warmth, and is for happiness. Then we have blue, which is for peace, water, prosperity, and warmth as well. We have green for growth, money. Fertile fields, so fertile fields is is considered, you know, your your womb, you know, having your money come flowing in like water, just the fertile sites, okay? You know, where you fertile, the fertilizer, okay, and life. Then we have purple. Purple is power, glory, success, royalty, and mastery. We have white, which is purity, power, and faith. We have black, which absorbs and holds things, and it's also a good color for healing or cleansing your altar. Okay, so you can have this altar, and you can just keep changing out your colors if you choose to. Okay, and you can have multiple altars. You can have an altar for ancestors. You can have an altar for protection. You can have an altar for love. You can have an altar for protection. It's really up to you how many altars you decide to have, or you could just sw keep swapping out your colors. That's completely up to you. Okay, so now what goes on your altar? Okay, on your altar, you can place a Bible. Okay, and if you don't want to place a Bible, you can place your tarot cards. But the Bible or, or your tarot cards is for Blue Messi. Okay, it's divining with the Bible or divining with your tarot cards. Okay, so you'll take your tarot cards and with your tarot cards while you hold them. A 
Okay, Tessie, um, can you inbox me, babe, on my page, and I'll make sure that I inbox you back. Um, so, you'll take your tarot cards. So, for instance, these are my tarot cards. These aren't, I got a whole bunch of them, so I just grab whatever pair. Okay, you can take them out the box, and you can set them on your altar, right? And as they're sitting on your altar like this, you'll take your lips to them, and you're going to make sure that when you're speaking, your air is pushing over them. So, you'll ask a question. You know, do I have any negativity on me? And let the air blow out, and then you'll be able to pull a card, and usually that's your answer. Okay? And the same thing with the Bible. You do the same exact thing. You put it to your lips, you speak over it, you blow the air out over it. And it's going to do the same exact thing, okay? Um, and usually the passage that you lay your eyes on, that's usually your answer. A white candle. A white candle needs to burn there for seven days, okay? If you have a problem with candles burning in your household, snuff them out. Don't blow them out. But the white candle is for your ancestors, okay? You can set this candle in your bathtub. You can set it in your oven, however you prefer to. I personally leave my candles burning all day because I work from home. My There's always someone at home. My mom might be home. You know, my kids might be here. But they all know, okay? So, I burn my candle for seven days. My kids know not to touch my altar. They know they don't go near the altar. They know they don't remove nothing from the altar. My nephews know this. So, if these are conversations that you haven't had with your children and your spouse and your family, I suggest you do so. Do so. Do so. Definitely, if they're supportive of what you're doing, okay? Like my mom, she will tell the kids, you know, do not touch that altar. Do not touch anything over there. Do not move anything over there, okay? And she will be the only one to move something if it needs to be moved, if necessary. Otherwise than that, my candles burn all day. They burn continuously. They do not get blown out. They do not get snuffed out. They are burning 24-7, 24-8, nonstop, Okay? So, the white candle is there for your ancestors. A glass of water. A glass of water to keep them hydrated. Okay? A photograph or personal item that belongs to your ancestor. A hat. A candle. I mean, a hat. Um, their church hat. Their pictures. Um, a piece of clothing. You know, uh, their last pack of cigarettes. Their wallet. Whatever you have that you kept from when they passed on. Okay? Um, if you do not have photographs, if you do not have personal artifacts, you can just use their name and their birth date. That works as well. So, if all you got is their name and their birth date, that's fine. You use their obituary too. Okay? Fresh fruit. Bananas, apples, grapes, mangoes, pineapples, things of that nature, and a chair. Okay? Your offerings, like your fruits, should be removed every three days. Okay? They need to eat just like you. When you don't eat, what happens? You get a headache. You get dizzy. You don't, you're not, you have no energy. You don't feel up to doing anything. Your ancestors and your spirits need to eat. Just like we eat, they eat as well. They just eat in the spirit realm. Okay, now you should be removing these offerings every three days. When you're removing them, you're placing them in a brown paper bag. You're taking them to the crossroad, or you're taking them to the cemetery, or you're taking them to an oak tree. Okay, or a tree inside of a park. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you still need to dispose of it properly by putting it into a brown paper bag. Okay, to call your ancestors, you take a stick, you knock on the floor. Three times. Call out to them. Call their names. Hey, Grandma Lulu. Hey, Grandma Lisa. Hey, Grandfather. Hey, Papa. Whatever it is that you call them, you, that's how you bring them to you. Okay? And once they, once you do that three times, you then take that white candle when you light it and you present it to the north, the east, the west, and the south. Okay? You call them the way that you feel, could, you feel content calling them. You call out to them to come to you. Okay? That is completely up to you. I cannot tell you how to call on your folks. Okay, I know how to call on mine, but you need to learn how to call on your own folks, okay? So if you're ever wondering why stuff has been going to shit or why stuff is not working or you're like, damn, Nisha, I got an altar and the shit ain't working, you know, I just want to know why. It's probably because you don't have what you need to do your altar or your altar is not set up right. It just could be a countless things that is going on with your altar, okay? 
Extra things that you can place on your altars are cigars. Say your papa likes to smoke cigars. Say your grandmother likes to smoke cigarettes. Put their cigarettes or cigars up there. Say that they like a certain kind of candy. Put their candy up there. Put coffee if they like coffee. Put dirt up there. Whatever you feel it goes towards your ancestors is what you need to have up there. Okay, once again, like I said, do not have them clashing. Do not have stuff up there that they don't like. Okay, that can stop them from working for you. So, my grandma, for instance, she smoked Newports one time in her life. But when she passed on, she smoked Mavericks. So I would not put no Newports on my altar because I know my grandma didn't smoke Newports. She smoked all she smoked Mavericks. But if you got her some Newports, she would. So I would still put those up there. But I wouldn't put no cigars up there. My grandma didn't smoke cigars. Okay. I wouldn't put no coffee with all this stuff in it, knowing that my grandma drank black coffee. Okay, my would put you could put alcohol on your altar. My grandma drunk Jose Cuervo and Sailor Jerry's. On my altar, I have a shot of Jose Cuervo. I go sometimes buy shots of Sailor Jerry's. Don't put stuff on your altar that you know your folks did not like in their life when they were alive. Okay, so I wouldn't go put if I was making tacos, I wouldn't dress my tacos for my grandmother with lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, sour cream, and guacamole. My grandma didn't eat all that shit. My grandma ate the basics. She was real basic. Taco meat and cheese in a shell. Okay, she wasn't all into no sweet cereal either. So if I eat me some cinnamon toast crunch, my grandma's gonna get some cornflakes. Okay, even as we, even as kids, we went, we loved to go to my grandma's house. But as kids, we really didn't want to go because we knew we had to eat basic shit. So if we, if we went at home, we knew we were getting cornflakes, we was getting Cheerios, we was giving oatmeal, powdered milk, we were giving stuff like that. Okay, so. Because my grandma just wasn't big on that new age shit. My grandma recorded all her movies for us. VHSs. She didn't, we didn't have cable at my grandma's house. So when we went to my grandma's house, we liked it because she had the good movies. But guess what? We were VHS kids. Put it into the computer, put it into the VCR. Fast forward, rewind, find the movie that we want to watch. And that's how it worked. Okay. So if you don't know your ancestors, get to talking to your parents. Ask your parents about their parents, their parents' parents, and all that extra stuff. If they don't know and you're just trying to honor your ancestors, honor them and tell them to bring anyone who's good to you that's only for you. No bad ancestors. That means no bad ancestors. That count that cancels out any of the ancestors who was robbing banks, doing fuck shit, doing hidden secrets that nobody wanted to talk about. Things of that nature, i.e. pedophilia, ch child, all that extra stuff. Okay? Got to be careful because I can't be afford to be getting blocked. But those are the type of things that you don't want on your ancestor all all right um your ancestors are there to help you you talk to your ancestors just like you talk to your gods you talk to your universe all right so if you have an altar and you set up this altar and with the 30 days you don't see no change that means you're doing something wrong and you need to reach out and try to talk to me so i can help you all right um is there any questions about these altars We'll also talk about um, the extra altars that you can make, like how to do a success altar, how to do a self-love altar, things of that nature. Like I have a personal altar and I have a working altar. My working altar is for clients. My working altar is for group rituals. So like I don't sit anything that's for my group rituals or for my personal clients um, rituals on my personal altar. Okay. So we'll discuss these all We'll go more in depth about those type of altars at another day. But if there's any questions about altars now, go ahead and let me know. <laughs>